There is such a thing as an I-cord bind-off or attached I-cord. I've worked it here on a piece of ribbing. I absolutely love it on a ribbed edge. It's a nice finish for a button band. And I've seen it used in one design where there were buttonholes placed here. So it's a nice sort of afterthought buttonhole solution as well. That's how it looks on ribbing. It's fantastic, unusual, but works really effectively. This is how it looks on garter stitch. It hides a little bit more. It's not as strong a finish in terms of being a contrast, but I like it for that. And on the wrong side, see you, you see that tidy roll there. Here's how that works. At the start of this row where I wanted to start my bind off, I will have cast on two stitches. It's two, it's not three, for my three stitch I cord. And what I'm doing here is I'm doing knit two, and then a left leaning decrease and the left leaning decrease. And some people will do a knit two together through the back loop. I'm actually a big fan of SSK. That's my preferred one here. So I'm gonna do my SSK. And what I'm doing with that move, with that decrease, see again, I slide back. That's I chord. You're always sliding those three or four stitches back. And again, now the yarn pulls across the back and pull it nice and tight to close the cord up. So I knit two. And what that left leaning decrease does is it binds off one of the stitches of the piece that you're working of your final row. And it's a lovely tidy finish. It's a substantial finish, which can be really nice. And it's also got a bit more stretch in it than a conventional bind off. So this can be useful if you're habitually one of those people who pulls the yarn a bit too tight when you're binding off. I do, it's not a user error. It's just a sort of a quirk of binding off there. It's really easy to make it too tight. So this gives you just a little bit more movement. And I like the framing of that edge. And it can be done on ribbing. It can be done on garter stitch. It can be done in stockinette stitch. And you see here that it's working perpendicularly to the direction of your knitting. And this is actually the same principle as an attached edging in lace. There is also an I-cord cast on. It's a super edge, also stretchy and substantial, and it looks really nice on both sides. I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's a little bit persnickety, and there's some different techniques, and there's some variations I've seen. This is how I like to do it. Cast on four stitches, and I'm gonna do the old I-cord slide back technique. And what you do is you actually purl the first stitch. Okay, purl. Then I'm gonna work an increase. And there's debate about the increase here, which is where the differences come in. I first learned this as a knit through the front and back, and I don't love the edge it makes. So what I do now is I pick up the right leg of that first stitch of the three. So I'm picking up, using the tip of the right needle here to pick up the right leg of that stitch. I'm gonna pop it onto the left needle and I'm gonna knit into it. I'm gonna do this demo a few times so you can see it. So I'm gonna knit that. And then I am going to knit those three I-cord stitches. So I'd cast on four, but this is still a three stitch I-cord. I slide four back, the three of the I-cord plus that first stitch, that new stitch that I made. I'm gonna bring the yarn around to purl. So I purl the first stitch. The purling here in this different increase helps with the bagginess because if you've done it other ways, you may have seen that the edge and the stitches that you cast on are a bit loose. This helps with that problem. So this increase, let's talk about this again. I'm using the tip of the right needle to grab the right leg of the mother of this stitch. It goes onto the left needle and I'm gonna knit just into the front of it. I don't wanna twist it. Okay. And then I am going to knit those three again. Okay. I always just pull it down just to make sure it's a nice crisp edge. Slip back one, two, three, four. The fourth one is the new stitch I made. That's the new stitch I cast on. I purl it. Okay. And again, here's that increase. I'm using the tip of the right needle 
to pick up the right leg of that stitch's mother and I knit into it. I've worked a few more so you can see how it's starting to look here. These are the stitches that I have cast on and you see little pearl bumps there. This is what's stopping them from getting to too baggy. If you've worked an I-cord cast on and had those stitches be baggy, purling them is really helpful. So again, slip back four, where three of my I-cord, that's the increased stitch. I bring the yarn around. Where's my yarn? It's not an elegant thing, this. The result's elegant. The working is less so. I'm always moving the yarn around. There's the purl, so that stitch is tidy. Then I'm going to work that increase again here. I'm picking up the right leg of the stitch, stick it on the left needle and knit into it. All right. There's my new stitch, but it's not complete yet. It's too loose. It's only really half a stitch right now. It's not very stable. You can see there the way it's lying. It's not very stable yet. We make it stable by bringing the yarn around and purling into it to tidy it up. And that's your I-cord cast on. And it looks really nice against stockinette stitch. It looks terrific against garter stitch. And it also looks fantastic instead of a garter tab in a shawl. That's right, I cord as a shawl edge, showing it here on the start of a shawl. Instead of a garter tab, I just worked a length of I cord and picked up in that instead. And here on the edges, look at that finished and gorgeous. It's really attractive. And of course, if you finish it with an I cord bind off, you've got a perfectly framed shawl. Just a thought. <laughs>